Hello, I'm Barry from Blanchestown Library and I'm here with part three of the Fingal Library's online photography course. Today we're going to be talking about light and weather conditions for photographers. Now those of you who looked at the second part of this course will know that I said there was three elements that make up a really good photograph. And the first of those is the subject. You've got to have an interesting subject. The second is composition. And the final one, the third one, is the quality of light and that's what we're going to have a look at today. Um, basically what I'm going to do today is go through an entire day from early morning to night time and look at all the different types of weather conditions and light conditions that we might come across in a day and we're going to look at what type of photography works best at those times and in those conditions. And the idea is that no matter what the weather there's always something you can do. Some types of light are a bit more difficult to work in than others, but we'll, we'll have a look at that. And um, along with composition, getting the right light is really something that's going to bring your photography from here up a level. Okay, getting the right light. And, we, and you'll see that later on. I'm going to show you some comparisons of photographs taken in different light, and you'll see how, how good light can really transform uh, a scene. So we'll, we'll get straight into it and we're going to start with the morning time. Now, in the last uh, lesson I spoke about blue hour. Now blue hour is most often associated with the evening time. It's that period when the sun has set and the sky hasn't quite gone completely black yet. Instead it's a deep blue colour. Now what we often forget is there's also a blue hour in the morning time, which can be a fantastic time to get out and take photographs. Okay, so we'll, let's have a look at some examples of photos taken during the morning blue hour. So this was taken in Dublin. Okay, very early morning. In fact, a lot of my night shots of Dublin were actually taken early morning. And you can see here that the sky is a deep blue okay it's not a black night sky it's a deep blue color okay so it tends to give you a more attractive light than than pure black sky because there's still a little bit of ambient light there which means you don't have too much contrast between say the buildings here and a black sky okay let's more examples this is the customs house again photographed uh, not so long ago, actually only a few weeks ago, but early morning, you can see the sun is about to rise over here to the east. And you've got that pleasing uh, contrast between the deep blue of the, the sky and the building here. Again, if that was a pure black sky, it just wouldn't be as attractive as an image. We'd also begin to lose a lot of detail in the building because there'd be too much contrast between the sky and the subject that we're photographing. Another one here, taken on O'Connell Street. This is barely, barely in blue hour. You can just see a little bit of the blue colour here up in the sky. So taken a few years ago uh, when Cleary's was, was still with us. Sadly, it's closed now. Um, and again, another example of morning blue hour photography. Back to the Hapenny Bridge, the same again. Uh, this was taken only a few weeks ago as well, down uh, along the Liffey Keys there. Uh, again blue hour photography so this is something that we most associate like I said with evening time but we often forget there's also a blue hour in the morning I actually prefer shooting then because I find especially when you're out shooting in a city and um, it tends to be a lot quieter although at the moment it's very quiet um, and I just I just like the shots that you get uh, taken in Venice early morning again, St. Mark's Square again, another place that is very quiet at the moment and it was quiet the morning I went there. Uh, in the blue hour you can see that the sun is really close to rising there and you, you just get a lovely uh, contrast between the sky and the subject. Same again in Venice early morning. Uh, this is one of my favourite photographs from uh, that trip and, and it featured in the last tutorial I did on composition when we spoke about framing um, and again it was taken in that morning blue hour and again as you, as you can see there I had the place completely to myself. <clears throat> taken in Paris, 
early morning i was very lucky because about 10 seconds after i took this shot uh, the lights went out on the arctotrion flare so you have to get your timing just right so <clears throat> that's our morning blue hour so we're going to move on now after that what comes next in the daytime if you're lucky is the dawn okay a dawn which is the the time just before sunrise so it's in between blue hour and sunrise it's often a time where you get quite subtle pastel tones in the sky and you often get a softer light at dawn than you would get in the evening time <coughs> so let's have a look at some examples of photographs taken at that time so uh, again this is one that featured last week this is taken in carton house in maynooth and you can see the beautiful colors in the sky there that kind of uh, oranges moving into to pink there that light might last only 10 minutes and it's a question of being there at the right time so i would arrive long before this light was ready um, to show itself ready in position i knew the shot i was going to take and uh, and waited until i got these beautiful colors again taken the same morning and you, you'll see that although this was taken the same morning it's it looks completely different at this point in the day that the sky has now turned into a, a kind of a pink color so that that light can be changing all the time uh, again back to dublin city and uh, you know we've all seen the halfpenny bridge we've all seen this scene a lot but we, we rarely get to see it looking like this and the morning i was there it was it was a cold january morning um <clears throat> i was very lucky to have a beautiful sunrise and beautiful colors in the sky like this with the yellows and pinks and deep blues again that light lasted only a couple of minutes but i was in position ready to capture it uh, taken minutes after that photograph looking down bachelor's walk again with lovely colors of the sky you'll also notice that in the morning time and this often happens in the evening it's a great time to capture reflections because when the temperature is a little bit lower in the morning and the evening the wind tends to drop and that's your time to get your reflection photographs again taking the same morning this time looking down towards the Rosie Hackett bridge which was the first bridge in Dublin to be named after a woman a trade unionist um, so again you can see the, the the clouds there the sun hasn't risen yet but the light from the sun is hitting off the underside of the clouds and creating these lovely pink hues that's why on a morning like this you actually want a little bit of cloud you wouldn't get the same effect with a pure blue sky and i'll show some examples of that later and um, this was taken quite recently down at the docklands again and uh, again you can see the sun is just about to rise and you've got these lovely purples in the sky so this is your dawn photography again taken down in the same area uh, this was taken early morning in paris um, at about 6 a.m um, again i had the place completely to myself and uh, lovely colors i would have maybe liked if there was some clouds there as you can see that there was nothing but i, I think the subject matter is interesting enough uh, to, to kind of get away with that maybe it would have distracted from the eiffel tower itself again taken in paris early morning uh, you can see the arc de triomphe and uh, the eiffel tower in the middle there in the distance uh, again i was lucky just after i took this shot an air france coach parked right in front of me so again th there's a lot of luck involved uh, venice early morning when i first got up this morning i was a bit disappointed because it was quite cloudy and i didn't think i'd get the the shot i wanted but um, when I went down to this area, I noticed that the, the, the sun, which hasn't, hadn't actually risen yet, was beginning to cast this pink glow on the clouds. And it turned out to be quite a nice shot in the end. So, <clears throat> we've looked at dawn. After that, we're going to look at the morning golden hour. I'm sure you've all seen in the morning and evening time, you often get that beautiful warm light. Um, this is the time we call golden hour now it's a bit of a, a misnomer because it often doesn't last an hour it depends on the time of the year in the summer you could get a longer golden hour than you might get in the winter time um, and basically what's happening at this time of the day is the sun is low in the sky and it's passing through more of the atmosphere relative to where we're standing and what that does is it scatters the blue light 
okay you know the way light is made up of different colors in a spectrum well the blue light which is kind of a cool cold light gets scattered and you're left with the reds and the oranges and those that lovely warm light okay which is always very attractive in photography particularly for landscapes or urban landscapes which i do so let's have an example of of the morning golden hour again taken in paris and you can see this golden glow on all of the buildings here in notre dame and on these buildings here normally these are kind of a, a cream color uh, stone very kind of distinctive in paris but that low you can see the shadows down here that low sun has cast everything in a golden light i would have liked to have a little bit of cloud here for to to you'll see some examples of golden hour photos after with with, with clouds and it's, it's a little more attractive but we 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 deal with what we can if anyone's interested this little building here is the tour saint jacques where often the uh, pilgrimage to santiago de compostela was one of the starting points actually they would start from here head down through in france and into spain so let's look at some more golden hour this again taken at carton house the sun has risen literally seconds before i took this and you can see the golden light it's beginning to cast on the boathouse here and on the trees so it's a lovely time to get um these type of photographs same in carton house golden hour on the bridge and you can you can you can really see the glow in it there and uh, there's a closer version of it and uh, this little swan here obliged me by swimming into the scene at just the, the right moment so a lot of photography can be luck and um, again on the grounds of carton house this time shooting into the sun sun is actually sitting right behind the tree there so i've used the tree to block out the sun and it's cast a shadow towards me but again you can see that lovely golden light uh, taken down in glendalock early morning again you can see the golden light hitting off saint kevin's kitchen as it's called here which contrasts nicely with the shadow that's been cast along the valley and um, this was taken not so long ago in the docklands and this photograph um when we compare it to the paris one you'll notice that i did have some cloud and look what it's created i get the same lovely colors that i got at dawn but also combined with the golden light that's now hitting off the building so it's a really really good time to get photographs uh, staying in the docklands again taking around a, a few minutes uh, after the the previous shot again you can see the golden light just hitting off the buildings here yet we still have those lovely colors in the sky um, I moved on then to um, the Grand Canal dock area and uh, Hanover Quay there and there you can really see the golden hour uh, very strongly. You can see the golden light is hitting off the buildings here and making them glow uh, and again I've got a little bit of colour left in the sky there. So that's, that's a, a really clear example of, of good golden hour light. Uh, and then back along the quays. So, um I, I think i when i finish this i walked up along the keys until basically the light ran out there'll, there'll come a point where as the sun rises up into the sky it's it's no longer that lovely warm light the light gets a little bit cooler and it's no longer as, as interesting um again that was probably just about the last of the golden hour light that that same morning down on bachelor's walk again you know it, it just warms up the photograph a little bit that taken in the daytime it'd be an interesting shot but not quite as nice as in the morning time and um, again taken in in carton house in Manute. again another backlit shot this time taken in the winter time and um, and another advantage of that the low sun is you get these really strong shadows which can make for interesting compositions um, another backlit shot then again this time taken in Stevens Green we often forget that backlighting is, is a valid option uh, when we take photographs so I'll always look to in the morning especially look if there's any possibilities for some backlit photography and um, this is just to give you an example of what I was saying earlier this was the boathouse in Maynooth taken in the middle of the day this is in the middle of a summer's day now intuitively we think oh summer's day that would be warm light Whereas in fact the opposite is true. In the middle of a summer's day, the light is actually quite cool. It's it's an almost blue light. So take a look at the building here, and now let's take a look at it taken in the morning time. And let's look back again and look at the tones on the building. And look here. So you can see that that warm light 
makes a big difference to the scene. There you can see how the image seems a lot a cooler uh, kind of palette, a cooler tone to the image than this one. So I, I know which one I find more attractive. It's, it's definitely the second one there. So that's why it's, it's worth getting out with the camera in, during the golden hour. Um, we're going to stay at morning times. There's one type of weather that um, really comes down to luck and that's mist. I think I've only been lucky enough to get misty mornings on two occasions and uh, they, they allow you to really capture something a little bit different and um, again at Carton House you can see there was this this kind of blanket of mist just sitting on the on the ground there so anywhere with a lot of grasslands which is is what Carton House is it's, it's a golf course mostly uh, is always a good place to to get mist so if you if you see the weather's going to be calm uh, and, and chilly enough you, you have a good chance to get some mist in the morning uh, again taken in the same location you can see the mist just sitting over the water there uh, this was taken in Bruges I got up one morning uh, ready to photograph and when I went out I was actually disappointed at first when I saw the mist I thought oh, I'm not going to get a golden hour and I'm not going to get that dawn light and then I realized actually this was an opportunity to get something a little bit different uh, black and white is a great option in the mist it, it adds atmosphere and give something a little bit different so you can see that the bridge here in the foreground is quite strong but the, the building in the distance is, is more faded uh, with, with the mist in between me and the building again taken in Bruges this is the famous bell tower or belfry of Bruges and you can see it's almost completely obscured by the mist so it's an opportunity to get something a little bit different um, okay daytime sunny weather a lot of people are surprised by what I'm going to say next. This is actually the hardest type of lighting conditions to work in. In the middle of the day, when it's sunny, the light tends to be very harsh. It's a strong light. It's not like that soft light you get in the morning or the evening. It's a strong, harsh light, which can be very difficult to work in. My sister is a wedding photographer. Her preferred conditions for weddings are as a nice overcast day it's easy to take photographs in sunny days are a nightmare especially with the white of a wedding dress it can be too bright and you, you lose all the detail uh, that's not to say it's impossible to take photographs in the daytime when it's sunny of course it is but you, i find you do have to work a little bit harder to get the shots uh, also in the in middle of the day that midday light tends to be quite a cool light like i showed you earlier um, this was a photograph taken in Donegal, daytime. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a great location. Uh, the, the composition isn't bad, but the light isn't fantastic. Uh, one thing you can do in those conditions is often black and white will work a little bit better. And black and white is a bit more suited to the harsh light because you get the, that deep contrast here of the blacks in the shadows and the white of the, the surf in the in the water there or the clouds and the sky. So black and white is a good example. And if you if you compare them, I mean I think the black and white works a, a bit better. I mean this is it's not a terrible photograph, but it's not great. Uh, again, Notre Dame in the daytime, you know it's it's okay. It's a decent shot, but I think it's a much better shot in black and white. Again you can bring out the contrast there in the clouds. Uh, another one taken in Paris there in black and white in the day so that, that's that's a good option it's a good option especially when you've got a sky with plenty of scattered white clouds like that you can get quite a spectacular sky uh, for example another one here from Donegal very interesting cloud cloudscape in the sky um, and black and white was, was always going to be the option there to bring that out and, and you can see the sky is nearly black there with the, the contrast uh, taken in Maynooth again uh, the reason Manute features so often actually is that that was my my university uh, about 20 years ago so I, I often go back there to take photographs and um, again you can get those quite dramatic skies uh, during the day and the harsh light works a lot better in black and white than it would do in color uh, again another one from Paris again you've got a, a quite an interesting sky there with the, with the clouds so those harsh light dates black and white is a good option another one there in Maynooth um, dappled light 
is something you can work with in the middle of the day. Dappled light is light that's been filtered usually through uh, a canopy of leaves. It can be in a forest or it could be on a street. Um, and what it does is it breaks up the harshness of the light and, and gives you something quite interesting and creates interesting shadows. This was taken on the Kulu Peninsula. Again, like a previous shot, I've kind of hidden the sun behind these trees here and, and captured the, the shadows as they came through. So um, that's an example you can use when you've got kind of strong sunlight, dappled light. Uh, another example of it there, um, taken in Romania. Um, and you can see that the dappled light passing through the trees here. And this girl is now apparently using this photograph as her Facebook uh, profile. She was delighted with it. Uh, taken in, in the Netherlands this time, in Arnhem. And again, using the dappled light of the, the woodlands around me so that the light isn't too harsh on the scene that I'm photographing. Uh, and this was taken actually with a mobile phone camera. It just shows you you don't have to have a fancy camera with you all the time. They say that the best camera is the one you have with you. And I was going for a walk in the, the lovely town of Tavira and just came across this little square. And uh, you've got the lovely dappled light coming through the tree here and casting a shadow on the buildings. Uh, and, I, and I took the photograph. So it was um, another example of, of managing to get a decent shot in the middle of the day. Uh, another option is to get out of the light, the harsh light altogether and look for places that are indoors or, or semi-indoors, such as an archway here in Tunisia. So I, I kind of, you can actually see here how strong the light was that I've, I've actually lost some of the detail, but I don't think it really matters in this case. So I've kind of got out of the strong light. Uh, same here in Romania, This you see these streets all over the place now that are um, covered in umbrellas. So again, the, the umbrellas filtered the, the light for me, so it wasn't too strong. Um, another option is to get in uh, indoors altogether and, and often in cities there's, there's, uh, a, there's places you can photograph indoors. This is in Brussels, uh, one of these beautiful covered indoor shopping galleries. So it, it was quite a sunny day so I decided to get inside uh, and, and get some photographs in there. Um, again in Maynooth in the chapel and you can see I've used the strong light this time that's coming through the windows and hitting off this wall and it's actually creating a very interesting play between the light and the shadow. And um, this was taken quite recently in Belfast City Hall. Again, a good example of uh, using the, the camera indoors. This was actually shot handheld and I, I spoke in the, in the very first um, lesson that when you put your ISO up quite high it means you can get faster shutter speeds and it permits you to handhold where normally a tripod would be necessary. But I also said that it can degrade image quality. This was taken, however, on a Canon 6D Mark II with a full frame sensor and, and it handles the high ISO. This was 3200. It handles it really, really well. So the newer cameras, especially the full frames, permit you to be able to take photographs like this handheld. And that's the uh, council chamber in Belfast City Hall. Um, another technique I like to do sometimes in the daytime when it's when it's very sunny is to use a long exposure. So in this case, I put a filter onto my camera that blocked a lot of the light coming in. And you can see that it's blurred the clouds. So this photo took about maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds to take. And the clouds have moved in that time and blurred as of the people here. It's, it's nearly made all the people disappear in what was actually quite a busy square. And um, that can also work quite well in black and white. And um, so that, that's another option um, using sunny days with scatter cloud for some long exposure photography. Uh, another long exposure photo photograph taken in Tunisia. This one was actually taken using an infrared filter. So the photograph from this came out with a red hue all the way through it. But when you, tra when you transform that to black and white, uh, you get a really strong contrast and an interesting photograph. And again, you can see the clouds have moved as I've taken the photograph there. You need a good steady tripod to take your photographs like that. Uh, again, down in Glenda Lock, another example of a long exposure shot taken in the daytime. Again, using the clouds here, the movement of the clouds to create some interest. Um, here's one of our very own council offices in Grove Road in uh, Blanchardstown. 
um, sunny weather can be very good for architecture shots. Now these may not be the type of shots that you'd, you'd hang on your wall, but it would be the, the type of shot that could be used in an architecture magazine or to or a brochure or just simply to show off architecture. And the harsh light can actually do a good job in uh, showing up the details in a building like this and it, the blue sky here completely blue it doesn't distract from the building at all so you know it does have its uses it's often used by real estate photographers people who are trying to sell properties will always want to shoot a nice blue sky uh, you know middle of the daylight it makes the property look quite attractive there's a, another angle there on that so you can see uh, it really shows up all the details in the building and that's our very own Blanchardstown Library, which of course we're all missing dreadfully at the moment. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get back there soon. If any of you have the, the brochure on Blanchardstown Library, you might recognise this is the photograph on the front of it. So again, taken uh, in a strong sunlight. Uh, one thing I like to do in strong light is focus on a strong colour. And in this case, it's it's the colour orange, obviously, from the oranges, uh, because the strong light can make it pop. And I often combine this with using a shallow depth of field. And if you're not sure what that is, if you just have a look at part one of uh, these lessons, I speak about aperture and how we can create a shallow depth of field. And what that means is it blurs the background. So you can see the church here in a, in a village called Castro Marim in Portugal has been blurred slightly and the orange tree here is nice and sharp. Another example of it here in Bucharest in Romania in a, uh, a monastery uh, again using a strong colour in the foreground nice and sharp and one of the monastery buildings a church there in the distance slightly blurred. So strong colours like flowers can work quite well in those conditions taken at the same monastery and like I said I often like to combine it with a shallow depth of field. Again, taken in a different location in Romania, this time using the yellow of the flowers. So that's that's a good uh, option for strong light. Next, overcast weather. Now, a lot of photographers, particularly landscape photographers, tend to think, oh, there's nothing I can do when it's overcast. The light is dull, it's boring, and uh, it just doesn't look interesting however that there's plenty you can do in overcast weather you just have to i suppose change your thinking and change the type of photography you're doing um i mentioned earlier that my sister shoots weddings and she loves overcast weather because the, the sky in that case acts like a giant soft box it gives this beautiful even soft light now i i've said this before i'm not a good portrait photographer it's not what i do but i've taken a couple this is my my son taken a few years ago and it was taken on a, an overcast day and you can see that it just gives a lovely even light all the way through it's very easy to to use for a portrait so port if, if you like taking pictures of people um your overcast day is a good time to do that um it's a good time to maybe shoot details because the overcast light is nice and even it's very easy to expose for details and um, so i've zoomed in here and captured these droplets on a leaf and uh, it was quite easy to expose for uh, wildlife photography again not something i do a lot of but uh, overcast conditions are good for wildlife photography again it makes the nice even light makes for an easy exposure you'll notice that i haven't really included any of the sky in this shot so that was deliberate because the sky wasn't interesting it was blank and white and and cloudy so i just left it out and focused in on the deer here in the phoenix park and uh, you can see this one guy has just stopped and looked back uh, someone in my photography club reckoned that he'd just remembered that he'd left the immersion on that's his theory anyway um street photography is a great thing to do uh, in overcast weather again exposure is easy this was taken in venice two ladies sitting by a bridge what's lovely about street photography is in these kind of conditions you, you set up your camera once you set your settings the light isn't going to change much so you can just concentrate on finding interesting subjects again i tend to leave the sky out where at all possible and focusing more in on interesting scenes that i'm seeing on the streets it works well in black and white as well there uh, again detail shots this was taken in venice in a little little hidden square 
Um, I returned and actually tried to shoot this again in sunny conditions and it didn't work because the shadow which came across here was so strong that this area was very bright and you could see almost nothing here. Whereas when I, I came back in, when I photographed it in the nice flat overcast light, it was very easy to get all the detail all the way through. Uh, again, taken in Venice. Again, you'll notice I'm not showing any of the sky there. I'm just focusing in on the street scene itself. Um, this is taken down in uh, the Italian quarter there in Dublin. Just something a little bit quirky. And taken under the archway in uh, Temple Bar there. Again, sometimes if it's not interesting, uh, sky, leave the sky out completely. Uh, again, another example of street photography. This was a, a violinist in um, in Bucharest. Uh, Temple Lane there in Temple Bar. Same flat day. You can see there's no strong shadows there at all. Um, again, like the Venice photograph, I tried to photograph this in strong sunlight and it just didn't work. Um, in this flat light, you get a much easier exposure and you get to see all the nice colours there of the flowers. They, they, they're they quite well saturated in those conditions. Uh, black and white is always a good option again for street photography taken on uh, Marion Square this time. This was taken just using a small little compact camera, uh, which I find really good for street photography. It's, uh, it's, you can work a lot quicker with them and the quality these days is really good. Again, another uh, pub frontage this time, we'll don't know who's in Dublin. So again, it's a great time to shoot details. Uh, can you shoot? with the sky still in the shot of course you can and in this case I think I've kind of gotten away with it because most of the interest is in the foreground the sky the blank sky doesn't really detract if anything it maybe it adds a little bit to the atmosphere um, this was taken uh, on that misty morning in Bruges which also meant it was quite overcast with flat light but again I haven't included much sky here I've just focused in on the subject area and uh, waited for this gentleman to cross the bridge, waited about 45 minutes until he did. And I, I'm going to discuss that in more detail in the next lesson. Um, and so again, your black and white street photography is a good thing to do with that, those conditions. Um, sometimes leaving the sky in it can, can work. I, I just like the emptiness of this shot. Um, again, very early in the morning in Bruges. Um, I just like the minimalism of it. Again, similar one taken in Venice early morning. So sometimes leaving the sky in and in overcast conditions can, can work. Uh, and it gets a particular feel uh, to the shot. So we've already had a look at the morning golden hour. So we're going to look now at the evening golden hour. Now I find that in the evening golden hour, the light tends to be a little bit stronger than in the morning. In the morning it's a little more pastel. Whereas in the evening I find that golden light is a little bit stronger. So let's have a look at some examples. Again, back to Notre Dame. So you'll see earlier I had a shot of it from behind in the morning time um, when it was bathed in golden light. Here it is in the evening time. Uh, and the front facade there again is that lovely glowing golden colour. Uh, this was taken in The Hague. Again, I mentioned this uh, area in the last um, lesson. And you can see the golden light there on the, the Moritz House Museum, where the, the girl with the pearl earring is. Um, you can see that lovely golden light hitting off the buildings there. Uh, here's the absolute last moment of golden light. Some of you will have seen this photograph already if you've watched the other lessons. And you can see that the, 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 the last bit of light there is just picking up a little bit of detail on the sand there. And bathing in it in a, just a little bit of a golden glow. Again, taken in Tunisia, you can see the sun went down seconds after this was taken, and you can see that last bit of light has painted the rocks here in this lovely golden glow, and you can see little bits of it here as well. Again, that's a moment that lasted only seconds. And it, again, I'm going to be talking about those moments. They're known as decisive moments in photography. I'm going to be talking about those in more detail in the next lesson. Uh, golden hour photograph in Paris from the roof of the Montparnasse Tower. Again, this sunburst lasted seconds. I was down uh, in the cafe, I think, when I noticed this out the window and I had to run up two flights of stairs with my camera and tripod flying everywhere to throw children out of the way and everything, but I, I got the shot. So I think it was worth it.
Uh, golden hour in Venice, again, evening time, you can see the lovely golden light on the buildings here. Um, it's, it's a good time for street photography as well. It's always a good time for street photography. And again, you see the golden light hitting off the Doge's Palace in St. Mark's Square. So architecture can look very well in a uh, golden light. Okay, so we spoke um, earlier about the dawn light. So this is its evening counterpart, dusk. So the sun has gone down at this point, but um, the sky hasn't gone particularly dark yet. So it's that kind of in between each twilight kind of uh, time of the evening, which can be a very interesting time to work in. Uh, there's an example of it in, in Paris. The sun has just gone down, but I've still got that orange glow left in the sky. And the lights are just beginning to come on. So particularly good for city photographs. Um, it's good for silhouettes as well. This is taken on Place de la Concorde in, uh, in Paris. And uh, again, I've, I've exposed more, more for the sky than for anything else, which has meant that the rest of the scene has gone into silhouette, which I think works quite well. The Eiffel Tower there looks quite close to the fountain. It's actually about two kilometres away. And the reason it looks closer is because I, I've used a, a focal length where I've, I've stood back and zoomed in. And that makes objects look a lot closer than they actually are. And that's something we, we'll have a look at in a, in a later lesson. Uh, again, taken in, in that kind of dusk moment when the sun has gone down. And the, what's lovely about that time is you often still get spectacular colours in the sky. So you can see it hasn't gone dark yet. So you've still got the buildings lit up, but you've got the beautiful colours left in the sky. Uh, I've said before, Paris gives the most unusual uh, sky colours. I don't know if it's to do with pollution or light pollution, but you often get this purple tone in the sky in Paris. Um, taken from the Academia Bridge in Paris. Again, I, I'd taken some golden hour shots that evening and they hadn't really worked out because there wasn't much happening in the sky in terms of clouds. And I was about to pack up and head off um, and I noticed that, that the sky had turned this kind of peachy colour and, uh, and I went back up and got a few shots. So, you know, never, never give up. Again, Portugal, uh, Tavira, you can see lovely colours left in the sky and the lights have just come on and it's a really great time to get photographs and again you might only have minutes to work with same location there uh, again on this one here i would have liked to have a little bit more cloud and um, i got nice reflections but it would have been nice to have a bit of detail and when i came back the next day i got that cloud as you can see you, you can see the, the difference i mean that's a, it's a nice shot and i'm, I'm quite happy with it but uh, the cloud there really made a difference uh, at that point, we're actually beginning to move more into the blue hour. So that dusk is transitioning now and the sky is beginning to go a deep blue. We've still got little bits of the pink light left there hitting off the undersides of the clouds from the setting sun. But we're beginning to transition into the evening blue hour. So we've spoken already about the morning blue hour. And now we're going to have a look at the evening blue hour. This is one of the most popular times to get your night photographs. A lot of people think you take your night photographs at night. In fact, the best time to take them is in blue hour. So in the evening blue hour is the time when the sun has gone down and the sky turns a deep shade of blue before it goes completely black. It's by far the best time to get your night shots. Um, when the sky goes completely black, it simply doesn't look as attractive, and I'll show you an example of that. Also, there's still some ambient light left, which it doesn't look like there's much light left, but there's enough to light up your subject uh, so that it doesn't have too much of a contrast with the dark sky. And I'll show you an example of that very shortly. So this was a, a good example of blue hour taken at Stevens Green. You can see what I mean about that deep blue colour. So the sky hasn't gone black yet. And again, blue hour may only last 10 or 15 minutes, especially in the winter time. In the winter time, you might have 15 minutes to work with. Uh, this, you know, it gets dark very, very fast. And uh, if you go into the northern latitudes up in the Scandinavian, that your blue hour might last all night. Again, down at the Docklands, taken only a few weeks ago. Uh, blue hour, you can see the deep blue of the sky. Again on the Samuel Beckett Bridge and on O'Connell Street. So it's quite early in the blue hour. You can see the sky is still quite bright, bright but that the lights are beginning to come on in the city and I've captured these light trails here from the traffic going past. 
uh, down at the Dublin Docklands again uh, with the National Convention Centre. Blue hour, even when it's cloudy, you can still get a nice blue hour. Um, taken very recently down at the Borgosh Theatre. Um, this is an example later in the evening. So when I was taking these photographs, I, I walked over to a different location because I wanted to photograph the, the theatre from across the water. But by the time I got there, you can see what's happened. The sky went very dark. So that lovely deep blue had gone and it was replaced with this, which isn't as attractive. And you can see it, it means that the roof there doesn't really stand out much against the sky. So I, I cheated. I actually dropped in a sky from another photograph. So maybe that's a little bit unethical, but um, I really liked the shot, but I was disappointed by the sky. So I, I put in a different one. It's up to you whether you think that's something you should do or not. It's, it's not something I do very often, but uh, in this case, I think I, I just really wanted to, to keep that shot. And, and that just wasn't going to cut it, I'm afraid. Um, again, this taken in Brussels, looking out over the city. I waited here for about an hour for this light to, to come about. So uh, a lot of photography is about waiting, waiting for the light. Um, Brussels again in blue hour. I just mentioned waiting for the light. One of, one of my favourite photographers is a guy called David Noten. You can get his books in the library. Uh, his first book is called Waiting for the Light and in, in it he mentions one occasion where he went to China and came back with one photograph. He was 10 days in China and the photograph he got, the light lasted no more than about 15 seconds. So I'm not suggesting you go all the way to China to take one photograph, but I am saying that sometimes you have to be patient. And I prefer to wait and get one or two really good photographs in excellent light than to get a lot of average photographs. Uh, this was again taken in the same place. By the time I'd gone to the other side of the arch, the blue hour was nearly gone. You can see I just have a little bit of blue left in the sky there and it's getting dark and it's getting harder to expose. You can see there, there's a little bit less detail in the arch compared to this one. Uh, it was getting a bit trickier to shoot in. Uh, this back to uh, location we saw earlier in The Hague, Blue Hour. The same city again, The Hague. And you've got the contrast there with the old square and the, the modern buildings in the distance. Uh, back to, to Portugal, again Blue Hour, one of my favourite photographs from that trip. Uh, Prague, this time in blue hour. Again, the cloud isn't so much of an issue in blue hour. In fact, you can make the sky quite interesting. Uh, and this was taken from uh, the hilltops around Prague. It's kind of a classic view of the city, again, during the blue hour. Venice. And this was taken only a few weeks ago up in Belfast. It's possibly the coldest I've ever been taking a photograph. I was absolutely freezing. Uh, but it was well worth it to get the shots, even though I think I lost two fingers. Again, Belfast in the blue hour. Had to work very fast. It was winter time, so blue hour didn't last long. I had to get a taxi from one side of the city to the other to get this photograph. Um, as I said, blue hour isn't always blue. Paris, as I've mentioned several times, for some reason has a purple hour. Uh, there you see it. I quite like it, to be honest. There's Paris again with its purple hour. You get interesting colours at that time. So why shoot your night photographs at blue hour? Why not just do them at night time? Well, here's the reason why. Um, this is going back to, to Bruges. Um, and you can see this photograph was taken when it's gone completely dark. You can see the moon up there. And, and I can see issues with it straight away. I mean, that big area of dark, dark area there just doesn't look particularly attractive. Also, you can see here I've lost a lot of detail. There's just a big blur of light. And that's because the contrast between the black sky and the lit up building is just simply too much for the camera to handle. So it can struggle to capture details. Now, I returned to that location the following evening and came back quite early in the blue hour and got this. Now, you can see quite a major difference there. For a start, you could see a lot more detail in the building, especially look at this area again around the doorway and look at it here. And that's because there's still some ambient light left. And again, I think the deep blue is a lot more attractive than the black sky there. So there's an example of why shooting at blue hour is a better option. Um, does that mean you can't shoot when it gets completely dark and black sky? Of course not. There's always options. 
Uh, one option is to simply not include too much of the sky at all. Uh, this was taken on Grafton Street, um, so I just left out most of the sky and uh, concentrated on street level. It can still be a little bit tricky to get the exposure right uh, in those conditions, but it is doable. Again, uh, on Grafton Street, similar, uh, possibly taken the same evening. This was up in Belfast again. Uh, you'll notice at that point I often work in black and white um, because you know and to go back to this one it's it's just not as interesting whereas you, you get away with that black sky a little bit more in a black and white photograph than you would in a color photograph uh, again that that's in prague again there's, there's a, you can see quite a bit of the sky but in black and white again i think it's it, it works a bit better than it would do in color uh, taken in portugal that was the previous shots you could see that church up on a hill in the distance so there it is up close Another option is to leave the sky out altogether, just focus in on, on ground level, a bit like you did with the overcast shots. Again, it's gone dark at this stage, but I just left the sky out of the picture and, and focused in on the what was happening uh, at ground level. Same then in uh, in Venice. I mean, yes, it is Venice. That uh, I think I mentioned already that this cafe... Uh, coffee alone will set you back about 15 euros so you're paying for the location really and I, I when i was taking this photograph this couple were, were discussing which of their children they were going to sell to pay for their meal i'd go on future earning potential myself but uh it's it's fantastic location expensive so uh, again shoot uh your shots leave the sky out uh rain again it's another time we, we think oh, put the camera away it's raining I'm not going to get anything absolutely not rain or just after the rain can be a great time to get photographs this was taken in venice actually maybe it had been raining but it also had the, the famous aqua alta some of the flooding that happens in venice and was beginning to recede but it, rain uh, leads to great reflections um there's a photographer i think on instagram called raw dublin and he, he does fantastic reflection uh, photography if you check him out uh, so rain is a good chance for that again you can see back on, on venice there with how people having their 15 euro coffees um using the, the puddles for reflections okay we're going to finish up with two case studies so we're going to look at a scene and we're going to look at that scene photographed in several different types of light to show how the light can completely change how something looks and um, now this is in bruges it's a one of the most famous viewpoints in the city it's called the uh, Rosenhode Kai the key of the rosary and uh, when I actually I took this during the day and you can see it's, it's your typical harsh middle of the day light in the photograph it's fine you know it's an interesting location the composition is okay you've got the boat there but the light is not particularly interesting it's quite harsh you might use it in a brochure or something like that but it's not really the type of thing you'd hang on a wall uh, now I came back to that area that evening to, to capture the kind of golden hour blue hour that type of thing and I was very disappointed because it, the sky was completely covered in thick grey clouds and I thought well that's it I'm not going to get anything tonight it's just not going to happen and, and that sometimes happens with photography so I went into the restaurant beside it and ordered a big plate of mussels and just kind of dealt with it but then when I came out about an hour later this had happened never give up the sky had begun to clear and I got these incredible colours in the dusk so the sun had just set and it was kind of painting the clouds in this incredible pink colour uh, and about 20 minutes later the scene began to look like this so let's look what that difference 20 minutes can make the sky has gone a deeper colour now an almost purple colour and the lights have begun to come on so look at that change from these and then about 20 minutes after that we were right in the middle of the blue hour okay the sun had set the sky had gone darker it hadn't gone black yet but we had that deep blue so just look at those four again daytime early dusk later dusk and blue hour see how the scene has completely changed so it was worth hanging around for the for the shot uh, another case study venice again we've seen this photograph already so look at that scene taken early morning there it is 
in the daytime not as interesting the light again it's it's an okay shot but it's not quite as interesting it's the light is is a little bit harsh it's a it's it's not particularly warm light but then look at it at blue hour so let's go through those again morning time daytime and blue hour um and again a long exposure here of 30 seconds meant that the, the gondolas here is kind of bobbed up and down and blurred a little during the exposure whereas the island and church here stayed perfectly sharp so i'm going to give you some tips of how to make sure you get the the best light possible for your photographs so tip number one is check the sunrise and sunset times of your location and that is something you can do online there's any number of websites that will do that for you so if the sun is rising at say 7 30 in the morning i'll usually try and be in location about an hour before that by then i'm getting pretty close to maybe the, the morning blue hour in the summer i might even go a little bit earlier than that and um, tip two is check where the sun will actually rise and set because that can make a major difference to your photograph to see which direction the light is going to be coming from um, and where the sun sets is where you're going to get the most colorful part of the sky as well again there's any number of websites that will do that for you a lot of them you can just put in your location and it'll it'll give the sunrise sunset time and exactly where on the compass the sun will rise and set uh, tip three check the weather forecast uh, yr.no that's actually the norwegian weather forecasting service is a particularly good and particularly accurate um, service to use and you just put in your location and it'll give you an hour by hour breakdown of what the weather will be like i found it very reliable and tip four is, is be patient as i said earlier a lot of photography is just about waiting waiting for the light or waiting for that interesting decisive moment uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next lesson the decisive moment and some of you who might have heard of a photographer called Henri Cartier-Bresson he's a French uh, documentary photographer and that was his uh, his major kind of contribution to photography he, he spoke a lot about this decisive moment and we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in the next lesson so I hope you found that interesting and that you now have an idea of the type of light you should be looking out for and when you can get it or what type of photographs you can take in different types of light hopefully when things calm down and we begin to get back a little bit more to normal we'll all be able to get out with our cameras and get some of those nice shots in the meantime you know there's plenty of shots you can you can get close to home i went out the other day with my small camera and took some some shots just of kind of plants and flowers and that type of thing so you know you can you can get some photos within your your two kilometers and um, some of you might be lucky to live near you know uh, a, a nice location or a, a nice view so you know try and get up early in the morning and see what you can do and um, so in the meantime stay safe look after each other keep up the the social distancing um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you in person back at the library hopefully in the not too distant future so in the meantime bye for now i'll see you the next time